Good morning. It is good to have you all here. Hopefully we all will get home safely. Uh, for those of you who enjoy snow, looks like we're going to get some over the next couple of days. For those of you who don't, I am sorry. Uh, you can pray for it to go away. Uh, just let us see it for a few minutes. <laughs> that being said, today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 92, and we will read it responsibly. What a beautiful thing, God, to give thanks, to sing an anthem to you, the high God, to announce your love each daybreak, sing your faithful presence all through the night, accompanied by dulcimer and harp, the full-bodied music of strings. You made me so happy God, I saw your work, and I shouted for joy. How, How magnificent your work, God. God. How, How profound, profound your thoughts. Dullards never notice what you do. Fools never do get it. When, when the, the wicked popped up like weeds, and all the evil men and women took over, you mowed them down, finished them off once and for all. You, God, are high and eternal. Look at your enemies, God. Look, Look at, at your, your enemies, enemies ruined, ruined, scattered to the wind, wind, all those hirelings of evil. But you've made me strong as a charging bison. You've honored me with a festive parade. The, the sight of my critics going down is still fresh, the rout of my malicious detractors. My ears are filled with the sounds of promise, Good people will prosper like palm trees, grow tall like Lebanon cedars, transplanted to God's courtyard. They'll grow tall in the presence of God, lithe and green, virile still in old age. Such witnesses to upright God, my mountain, my huge holy mountain. Let's continue to give praise to God as we sing our first song this morning. together as we pray this morning. Lord of the Sabbath, your followers were told not to work on the Sabbath, and yet they boldly plucked grain to show that you are Lord of all. The world tells us not to rest on the Sabbath. Show us how to rest boldly, rejecting conventions that go against your will and instead praying and resting as you did up on the mountain for the glory of your world and work, 
Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as Christ taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. continued to support the ministries of Hope United Methodist Church as we continue to offer small groups online, youth group, feeding the hungry, continuing to be able to offer worship both in person and online, and it is because of your generosity that we continue to be able to do this and find new avenues of ministry. For those of you who are watching online, we invite you to mail your offering to the church at the address shown, or if you prefer to bring it to the church and slide it under the office door, you are welcome to do that. I know we have talked about having an online giving option. We have turned in paperwork. It is our hope that that will be approved soon. For those of you who are here, the offering plate is located by the door at the back of our worship space. Thank you again so much. in all times and in all places and forgive us for when we do not recognize that you are there 
God, we are praying to you still in the midst of a global pandemic, in the midst of political upheaval throughout the world. We are praying to you as a people who are tired, who desire to be able to see one another face to face. And God, we pray to you as a people who are still uncertain of what the future may be like. We give thanks for the vaccine. We give thanks for the nurses and doctors and healthcare workers. We give thanks for those who continue to provide the food that is on our tables. But we, God, are still concerned. For we still see people sick, not just from COVID, but also from health concerns that range from heart issues to cancer stomach bugs to deadly disease. God, we have watched as loved ones have died and our opportunity to grieve restricted. And so God, we pray to you today as a people who are just stuck in the midst of the turmoils of today's life. Thank you for your presence. Open our eyes to see it more. We pray today for Dottie, Linda. We pray for your church, that it may continue to be your hands and feet in every way that it is able to do so. We pray this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our focus scripture this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 6, starting at verse 1 and following. I'm reading from the message. On a certain Sabbath, Jesus was walking through a field of ripe grain. His disciples were pulling off heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands to get rid of the chaff, and eating them. Some Pharisees said, why are you doing that, breaking a Sabbath rule? But Jesus stood up for them. Have you never read what David and those with him did when they were hungry? How he entered the sanctuary and ate fresh bread off the altar, bread that no one but the priests were allowed to eat? He also handed it out to his companions. Then he said, The Son of Man is no slave to the Sabbath. He's in charge. On another Sabbath, he went to a meeting place and taught. There was a man there with a crippled right hand. The religious scholars and Pharisees had their eye on Jesus to see if he would heal the man, hoping to catch him in a Sabbath infraction. He knew what they were up to and spoke to the man with the crippled hand. Get up and stand here before us. He did. Then Jesus addressed them. Let me ask you something. What kind of action suits the Sabbath best? Doing good or doing evil? Helping people or leaving them helpless? He looked around, looked each one in the eye. He said to the man, hold out your hand. He held it out. It was as good as new. They were beside themselves with anger and started plotting how they might get even with him. At about that same time, he climbed to a mountain to pray. He was there all night in prayer before God. The next day, he summoned his disciples. From them, he selected twelve he designated as apostles. Simon, whom he called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of, son of Alphaeus, Simon, called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Here ends the reading. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Doing good or doing nothing? I believe that all too often we have been raised with messages that call us to one over another. If you have nothing to, good to say, then 
don't say anything at all. If you can't do anything good, then don't do anything at all. And in our churches, especially the United Methodist Church, we talk about do no harm, and we carry it to the point, I think, too often, where in order to make sure we do no harm, we do nothing at all. My question is, folks, when we do nothing, what good are we? And when we try and ensure that others don't do anything either, what good are we doing? We are a people who like to be comfortable. We are a people who don't want the boats rocked. And we don't like it when somebody pushes us to a state where we are uncomfortable or to where we are called into questioning that which we have always believed or accepted. I liken it to this. To make sure that nobody does anything that they're not supposed to, we will put in practices, guidelines, and rules to ensure that everything is the way we want it to be or remain. For instance, we have things that we want to protect, so we build a room and we put it in that room where it is now protected and then afterward we put a door on it and we lock it and then to make sure that that door and room don't get intruded upon we build a more large space around it you might look at this like a bank we put in the safe then we build a cement block around the safe and then we build the building around that and then we put locks on the doors going into and out of then we add a narthex area so that there's a gateway and an additional door locks on all of that and if possible we'll make sure that we put a fence around the building and a great big entryway with a gate across the entryway all to make sure that nothing comes close to what is held in that one tiny little Oh, you need something out of that room? Tell me. I'll go get it. That way we can ensure that nothing gets touched, looked at, broken, or otherwise. On a certain Sabbath, Jesus was walking through a field of grain. His disciples were with him. They were hungry. The grain is ripe. It's ready to eat. So they take some of the grain. They rub it between their hands to get rid of the pieces you don't want to eat. And they were eating what was left to satisfy their hunger. You do know you're not supposed to work on Sunday, right? Now, folks, we are Christian, and we, when we hear the word Sabbath, we usually associate it with Sunday, because as Christians, that's when we celebrate our Sabbath. Sabbath is actually the day off. Uh, depending on which tradition you're in, that may be Friday night into Saturday, that may be Sunday. We're just saying Sunday because that's what we do here. But on a certain Sunday, Jesus was walking through. They did this, and, and the uh, religious leaders, the rule keepers, the gatekeepers, if you will, said, what do you think you're doing? Don't you know that that's not how we do things here? That's not allowed. Folks, we can put in whatever language we want, but in essence, the disciples were being what? Bullied into doing things the way the comfortable group wanted them done. This is how we've always done it, and you will do it our way, or you will what? Go away. In essence, that's what's being said. And Jesus stands up for them. He stands up for the disciples and he tells them a story of their great king that they admire so greatly because he had a heart after the heart of God and said, don't you remember that David went into the altar area, took bread off the altar that he had no business touching, let alone eating, and then gave it away? Nobody likes to have stories told that calls into question their own thought processes and desires, do they? 
Why not? Because we would rather be doing nothing than doing good. We would rather not do something that might rock the boat because after all, we're supposed to rest on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is meant for us to do nothing. Is it? Jesus has already called into question that very idea. And we do it every week. From the time I became a pastor, I have always been reminded by someone in the church going like this. And what they are passive-aggressively telling me in that moment is, you better hurry up, I've got a roast in the oven and I don't want it to burn. Or they're telling me, Pastor, you better wrap it up because the Baptists are going to get out of church ahead of us and they're going to get the best seats in the restaurant. I thought we weren't supposed to be doing work on Sunday. Yet, we, who made the meal? What about those folks at the restaurant? It's interesting because we don't want anyone in the church to be doing that. But we have no problems taking advantage of others, do we? I question how we in the church can continue to say that we are doing good when many times we are doing nothing. Why do I say this? Because we've got the next story. It was another Sunday, another Sabbath. He goes to a meeting place and he taught. No problem so far. After all, got to have your Sunday school classes, got to have your sermons, got to have that on a Sabbath. That's right. That's all well and good. And there located was a crippled man. Well, that's not a problem either as long as the crippled man stays off to the side where none of us have to be made aware of that particular person's what? Situation or limitation, right? After all, what makes us happy is when everyone looks, acts, talks, and has the same abilities that... We do. And the scholars, they know he's there. They also know what Jesus is most apt to do because Jesus came to release those who are stuck in a form of oppression, did he not? To proclaim release and healing. So far on a Sabbath, Jesus has had no issue with the disciples doing what was necessary for persons to have what? Food. Food. To be able to eat. Now he is about to do the next thing to remind folks that we as believers in Jesus Christ and followers are called to proclaim release to the oppressed and healing to the afflicted. And he makes an example. Tells the man to come up. And who all's watching with angry, eager eyes you see, Jesus right now is in what we call a glass house. Everyone can see what he is doing, and they're all just waiting for him to do what? You know the answer, you just don't want to say it. Make a what? Make a mistake, so that they can do what? Folks, we have an expression for this. The reality is, eventually, this is exactly what happens to Jesus, so they can crucify him. They want to make an example of Jesus, but here's what happens. Jesus calls this man up who is crippled and then looks at the leaders, the religious people of the day, the ones who want to make sure that rules are being upheld because on a Sabbath you're not supposed to do anything, but we tell you what to do. You're not to walk any further than necessary. You're not to cook. You're not to do this. You're not to do that. How is it that you find rest for your mind, your body, and your soul? What renews you, mind, body, and soul? And how easy is it to focus on God when your stomach is rumbling? How easy is it to focus on God when your lips and your tongue are so dry that all you can think of is if I could just get a little moisture in my mouth? How easy is it to focus on God when you have so much pain in one part or another of your body that you just wish you had some Advil or a leave or whatever to take it away so that you could think about something other than what 
hurts. He looks at the man. And then he looks at the ones who are just waiting for a mistake. The ones who say doing good is doing nothing. And says, what kind of action suits the Sabbath of God best? Doing good or doing evil? Doing nothing, folks, is evil. When we do not speak against injustice, we are helping injustice. When we do not feed the hungry, we are allowing them to starve. When we do not offer something to drink, we allow people to dehydrate. When we do not do what God has called us to, then we are allowing the very evil that God speaks against to continue. He looked each and every one of them in the eye. Now, how many of you have had somebody stare you in the eye as they make an argument? You know what I'm talking about. Mom looks at you. Tell me again how you thought. And you knew right then and there what? You were in the, you were in the wrong. God still does that to us. And Jesus looks at them and says, I want you to tell me. Is doing good or doing evil the best thing for a Sabbath? Is helping people or leaving people helpless what God desires on a day that is supposed to renew people, mind, body, and soul? And after he had healed the man, he went up on the mountain to pray. Once the work that needed to be done so that he knew that he was not the only one who was able to have rest, he spent time in the presence of his father uninterrupted with what he still had to do. He spent the whole night in prayer. Regardless of whether those who didn't agree with him were plotting or not, he had done what God had called him to do, so now Jesus is ready to rest. Afterwards, he called his disciples, and folks, at this point, it says that he's got a number of followers, and he designates 12 of them as his apostles. 12 who will be the ones who get to hear and learn the majority of what he came to teach so that they could share it when he was gone. But here's the thing, folks. This whole story reminds us that we are called to do good. We are not called to do nothing. We are called to do that which will allow us to experience a true Sabbath rest that renews us mind, body, and and soul, and the us is not just me. It is us, plural. Christ came so that the whole world might get to experience Sabbath, God's rest. Amen? Let's lift our voices as we sing our closing song this morning.
rest not because we do nothing but we do the good that allows all of us to rest in the name of Jesus Christ amen